Alright, so tonight we're going to learn how to make a simple sliding door, which we'll then be able to control using a button. As you can see, I started out by creating a simple map. It consists of two rooms, separated by a wall, and a passage in the middle. We also got a few spawns right here. Let's start out by uh, creating a door. Alright, make sure it fits perfectly on both sides. Uh, adjust the height and let's make it about 10 units thick all right with the texture click, click browse and type in door there are a number of doors you can choose from uh, just choose one of the metal ones click enter uh, make sure it's right in the middle right uh, as you can see the texture is a bit misaligned so we can fix that by going tools texture tool clicking fit alright now let's turn our static door into an entity this way we can assign functions to it uh, you can do that by going tools tie to entity or clicking control T choose func door and let's go through the options I'm gonna skip the ones we don't need Right. Uh, first the name in this case we need a name uh, most of the time we don't because uh, entities such as doors they operate without being referenced by other entities in this case we actually need a name because our button is gonna uh, gonna reference this particular entity so let's type in slide all right and speed this is the basic speed uh, which with which the door is going to open or close. Uh, 100 is good enough, it's standard, you can make it faster or slower. Alright, uh, delay before reset. This is amount of time uh, the door is going to stay idle before it closes or opens. In this case, after we open the door, it's going to stay open for 4 seconds and then it's going to close. We don't want that, we want it to stay open. That's why we put negative 1. Lip. This is basically how much the door sticks out when it slides all the way in. Uh, we don't want it. We don't want to have it at zero because it's gonna disappear completely. That's why we're gonna make it around 10 units. It's gonna stick out. Block damage and force close. All right. Um, force close is the option which makes the door close no matter what's in the way. If player is blocking, if debris is blocking it, it's going to close no matter what. So let's say yes, we're going to make it. Uh, the block damage, this is the amount of damage uh, the door is going to do to the player if he's blocking. Um, it's optional if you don't have to set it to anything. But if you actually set it to a certain number, uh, in this particular case it's going to kill the player because force close is all, also on. All right, uh, and move direction. This is important. Right now it's set to zero, and as you can see, the arrow is pointing to the right. It's relative to the top view, so in this case, it's gonna go to the right, and which means it's gonna come towards us. We don't want that. We don't. We want it to go up and down. If you set it to ninety, that's not up. That's that direction which is to the right. If you want it to go up, you go click here and set it to up. And that's about it. Click apply. And in flags, don't forget to uncheck the touch offense because we want the button to open the door. Alright. Uh, apply. Alright, let's create a button. Let's make it on the side of the wall. Let's make it 10 by 5 by 10 units. And make sure the player can reach the button. Alright. For the texture, it's really simplistic button, so we can just use any metal texture. I'm going to use a red metal texture. So we're going to have a red button. Press enter. And we have a button right here. Alright, uh, let's turn it into Entity, Tools, Tie to Entity, Control T, Funk, uh, Button.
right. The only office we need is our, let's see, speed. All right, five is a little slow. This is how fast is the button is going to move. Run 10 is good. Lip. I okay delay before reset. This is kind of important. This prevents a player from spamming the button. So around two seconds is good enough. That's how much it takes for the door to open and close in this case. I checked that. Um, we don't need a name because nothing references this particular object. Flags use activates. It's all good. Right. So now we have a door and a button and they're not functional as of yet so we're gonna make a button we're gonna assign the command to the button uh, go back to options and click output alright this is the command that the button's gonna give to the door start out by clicking add and my output name is pretty much a condition under which the command is gonna be given in this case it's on press uh, different entities have different conditions. They also have different uh, commands. Uh, target, uh, which is remember uh, when we named the door, right? Uh, select the name we gave to the door. Uh, if you have more than one entity on your map that is named, you're gonna see it pop up right here. Alright, input, this is the actual command. And instead of choosing open or close, we're going to choose toggle. What it means is when the door is closed, uh, the button is going to give it command to open. And when it's open, the button is going to close it. Which is nice because we have two different commands assigned to one output. We don't need any delay or fire once. We don't need that. Click apply. All right. Uh, we got that. If you go back to door properties, you can actually see in inputs. This is the output of the button. It automatically generated. If you double click it, you can go to original output and you can edit it again. Alright, we're pretty much done. Uh, we're going to compile the map. Before that, I'm going to create a ceiling real quick. ceiling texture like that apply right let's compile the map it should take around a second yep all right let's run counter strike source let's see if it works This is the name of the map I used. Alright, so we got our door, the button. Let's see if it works. Nice. Works pretty well. Uh, later on, if you want, you can actually add sounds to the button and to the door. I don't think it's important. Alright. As you can see, you can't really spam the button because it takes a while to reset. Also, as you can remember, we set some damage to the door. And if we try blocking it, we're gonna die. Alrighty then. And that's about it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.